In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the serpentine belt tensioner on this Mazda 6. Let's get started. Now through the wheel well, the passenger side, you'll see this cover here. I prefer to take this off. If you just turn the wheel, you'll have plenty of access to it. And this is so that I can get a lot more space to work underneath. Uh, you can access the tensioner a lot better. The uh, push clips here that hold this on can be easily removed with a trim tool. A couple of them are hidden under the fender liner, but you can still get to them. They're right here. Uh, there's another one that's uh, kind of tucked behind up there. You can pull the fender liner off uh, off of this push clip if you want. That'll give you a little bit more access to that. There we go. And then the last one is going to be on the uh, further side towards the back. Now you can pull this cover off. There we go. Now you're going to want to use a 17 millimeter wrench and you'll see that there's a cutout right there above this bolt. That is what you're going to want to pull counterclockwise on to release tension off of the belt. Keep in mind this is a hydraulic tensioner, not a spring tensioner. So when you pull, keep steady pressure on it. It will slowly release. Keep going until it pretty much stops. Once it does, you can grab the belt, pull it off of the harmonic balancer. You should have plenty of slack in it to do that. Take this off. And now once it's off, you can release your tensioner. It'll go back pretty fast and you can remove the rest of your belt. Get it off the AC. The alternator up top. And there it is. This 12 millimeter bolt here, we're going to have to break free and remove. Now it won't come out of the tensioner. We'll have to pull it out with the tensioner, but you have to uh, get it loose. This is one of the main mounting bolts of the tensioner. Break it free with a wrench. A wrench is pretty much the only thing that you're going to be able to fit in there. And if you have a ratcheting wrench at this point, that would come in handy so that you can uh, ratchet it out of there. Just be careful not to get it stuck between the bolt head and the frame, of course. So. Like I said, this will not be able to be removed yet. Once it's out, I'm gonna just leave it here and then we'll move to the top. Once it's loose enough, you should be able to unthread it by hand. There we go. It's out of the threads and it's up against the frame rail. This is perfect fitment right here. Now from the top, you'll see 12 millimeter mounting nut right there. That's what we have to remove in order to free up the tensioner. So if you have a long, low profile ratchet, stick it in there with a 12 millimeter socket. If not, you can get it with a wrench too. Break it free and remove it. There it is. Now with a pry bar, unless your uh, tension already broke free, gently pry it off of this top stud there just to get it off and then you're going to want to stick your hand down here and just try to wiggle it until it comes off. Perfect. At this point, you should be able to pull it away. That lower bolt is going to get in your way, unfortunately, a little bit, but you'll have to work with it. And there's not much space to see what you're doing, so you'll have to feel for it. Once you uh, get that bolt to come out, twist and maneuver it in such a way in which it can be removed. And there it is. At this point, we do have to remove this bolt and reuse it. Obviously, I'm going to clean that up, but there's your old tensioner. This right here is the threaded hole that the lower bolt goes in, that longer one. As you can see, it's slotted in the front. So just like when I took it out, I pushed it forward. When we install it, that bolt needs to line up with the slot go backwards a little bit and then it'll hit the threads and be ready to go in. So just so you know, this is what you're going to aim for. Take the new tensioner, stick the bolt right through it, and now put it back down into its spot here. You're going to have to move it around and make it fit. And remember that slot that's down there, you're going to have to line that up. You can kind of sort of see it from certain angles, but it is pretty difficult. At this point, uh, mine is in on the bottom. Just have to line it up at the top, which is actually the harder part. So there we go. I'm going to try and make sure that it's actually in on the bottom. It is. It's moving around. 
At this point, let's clamp it onto the top with the mounting nut. That way it stays pretty much locked in place. And then we'll go down underneath and uh, put that on. Get that mounting nut started. Thread it on as far as you can by hand. And then of course, use your tool. Now the torque for this one and the bottom one is 20 foot pounds. However, there's no way I'm gonna be able to get a torque wrench in there for either of them. So 20 foot pounds is not a lot. So when I tighten it, I'm just gonna do my best and get it nice and snug. Put my longer ratchet on here. This is pretty much bottomed out right now. I'm just gonna give it a little bit extra, about an eighth of a turn. That should be plenty. Should get me close to 20 foot pounds. And there we go. That bolt or that mounting nut is now tight. So we have to go back on the bottom now and finish it up from down there. Now back underneath, let's thread in the bolt that goes in through the bottom of the tensioner. There we go. Get those threads started on. Make sure they start on smoothly by hand. If they don't, that means it's cross threading or it's probably not even into the threads. In which case, back it off and try it again. This goes directly into the side of the engine block, so you don't want to damage that. I'm just going to bottom it out. Like I said earlier, the torque for this is 20 foot pounds, so it's really not that much. Once it's bottomed out, I'm just going to take my long wrench, put some leverage into it, and snug it up. That's bottomed out right there, at least by hand it is. So, wrench time. Okay, that's snug. I'm gonna give it a little extra. That feels pretty tight right there. It's about 20 foot pounds, so we're good to go. Now let's get the belt back on. You're gonna have to sneak it past all the pulleys, the AC on the bottom here, and the alternator on top. That one's gonna be the trickiest one just because of the location of it. There we go. Make sure it's sitting in all its ribs. And it is on the alternator as well. So let's get our 17 millimeter wrench and get ready to put this belt back over the harmonic balancer. I'm going to put it on partially just so it stays. And I'm going to grab this, pull tension off of it, once again counterclockwise. Now keep very slow pressure. This one, this new one's going to be really, really stiff compared to the original. Once you have everything in position, the belt on all the ribs. There we go. You should be able to squeeze it over the harmonic balancer. Okay, it's on. Perfect. And now you can let go, remove your tool. Now you want to visually inspect the belt and make sure that it's sitting flat on all the pulleys. It's on all the ribs. It looks perfect on the alternator. It looks good on the AC. Looks good around here. If it's off a tooth, or obviously more, that would be very bad. When you start the engine, it'll actually cut through the belt. And if it starts flying off of here, that would damage anything else that it catches in the way. So at this point, bolts are tight, belt is on. Let's put the cover on. Now let's bring this shield back in. Make sure it goes underneath the fender liner. And I have one push click ready to go so that as soon as it lines up, I can at least attach it in one spot and then let go. And this is going to be the easiest one to reach up here. So I'm just going to slide this push clip in and lock it down. If any of yours break, replace them. Otherwise, this is going to keep uh, flopping around as you drive, and that would not be great. Uh, it can also be unsafe if it gets caught in the wheel or anything like that. Up here, get this one reattached. There we go. Now we can put this one back. This is for the fender liner. All of these push clips were the same, by the way, so no need to keep them uh, exactly where they came from. Now let's move down to the bottom, and we'll attach the two bottom ones. There was one over here, and one behind the fender liner right over here. There we have it. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. 
Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.